Hello there everybody and welcome back to Mana Lords. Our second region is slowly but surely taking shape and yes indeed those bountiful plentiful fields are looking extra gold and crispy today. Oh man this game is just so unbelievably beautiful isn't it? I, I haven't seen anything quite like this in a very long time and I don't imagine we will for a long time. It's, it's really doing something truly unique. And uh, should be commended for that. Let's go have a look at those oxen. I, I, I find myself just spending like 10-15 minutes sometimes just watching little characters do stuff. It's not something I ever do in games. Okay, um, the particular nightmare that is before me is slowly rendering in and this suddenly is slightly less uh, nightmare fuel. My god. Day in the life of a true Brexit geezer. Now, while this lifestyle might be somewhat idyllic, it is unfortunately also a little bit stagnant. Uh, this village is not growing all that fast. Oh, this one's growing all that fast, sorry. Uh, Loserville over here is not growing all that fast. We are on the latest version of the game, which does add a bunch of cool new stuff. There's some more fixes, uh, mostly relating to farming. So now crops grow a little bit slower, um, and the plowing algorithm for animals is supposedly a lot more efficient. We'll see how that works out when they're done with those fields. Uh, also, the rate of growth for vegetable patches has significantly slowed down. Apparently, it's been patched and uh, they've, they've severely reduced how overpowered these are. I still think we have enough growth here that we're going to be fine. Maybe we don't sit on 20,000 food surplus after three years, but we will probably still have a surplus. However, what we don't have here is any population growth. And even though we don't really have the stuff to uh, maintain tier two houses, we can grow the population and therefore expand our army. So I think we're going to be doing exactly that. In order to do that, we're going to have to map out a little bit more of the village, decide where we want things to end up. And uh, let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay, lovely. There we go. We've planned out another, I don't know, 15 houses or so. That should really help ramp up this population. And unfortunately, I do notice that we have 1,200 planks, uh, which is, I, I, as the kids say, a little bit too much. So we're going to be turning off the salt pit here, and now that makes me worry that this one's probably overproduced somewhat. Uh, 34 planks? Uh, yeah, 34 planks, not so bad. It's not so bad. I think we'll keep it at that exact count for now. Uh, we have 14 bucks in the region, and there is a bunch of timber unused here, which I would actually like to make use of. So, we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to put down some more plots for housing in this area. And again, I'm kind of going to triple down on the old uh, on the old housing plan with, the, with having a bunch of veggie farms. That being said, we want to exclusively build those yeah, where the farming's not good. So, this we want to be fields. This we want to be housing. And these dang bandits just keep spreading, man. It's driving me crazy. That's eh, probably a good size. Could go one less. I mean, that's a pretty gigantic. That should be good, though. Okay, the other thing we wanted to sort out today was getting some mo goods moved from this side of the world to this side of the world. It's just down the road, but they do need to actually be carried over there. So let's get started on that. Now, the traders, I, I did a little bit of testing. The traders will only use the King's Road to move stuff around, so it is actually kind of advantageous for us to move this trading post to uh, somewhere much closer to here. We have very little external trade other than selling the ore, and I think I'd rather have it over here. I think I want to produce a bunch of raw resources in this area. We're talking cotton, wool, flax, barley, even clay. There's a whole bunch over there. And then have it exported to this area for refinement, and that way we can kind of specialize a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move this trading post. I think that's the plan here. I'm going to set this up on the King's Road, right on the edge here, and uh, hope that it's uh, a little bit being a little bit closer cuts down on the journey time. Because in my testing, people were walking from this trading post out the border, back down over here, crossing over sorry, crossing over to here, going all the way along out to wait. So they cross over there, and then cross back on, and then come back here and then go back this way, and then go down there, and then come up to this trading post, and then complete the circuit on the short route back. I, it made no sense. They took this, like, insane detour down past this area. And I'm, I'm thinking that's because of maybe these roads have a direction to them? I don't know. It might just be a bug. So let's put down another trading post and see if that fixes it. If it doesn't, well, I mean, you know, nothing's really changed for us. I guess we want this to be here. Yeah, right there. 
Also, Forest's Hut, you need some people working in you, ASAP. And uh, I want you reforesting this area over here. And the woodcutter's lodge should move as well down over here. They can start clearing out the forests in this area. UI is being a little bit laggy. Don't know what that's about. All right, but we are going to destroy this trading post. And we'll set up stuff as we go. In fact, with that in mind, let me go ahead and set up all the trading I want to do over here. We're also going to need some more stables to house the horses that we can hire, or to hire, the horses we can buy to dramatically improve the speed of trade. Because right now our guys are just walking, which is really not ideal. We want to we wanna get them on horseback, and in order to do that, we need more stables to put them in. So I'm thinking I can fit a couple of hitching posts over there. Yeah, that should be good. Can we fit two here? Oh, look at that. Okay, because I want more oxen for the farms, and I want more horses for the trading post. We can have, I think, two horses working at once, but I, I'm pretty sure I can get four working if I can get four traders. So yeah, let's let's go ahead and put down two of these. And we've got this weird little space here. Perfect spot for a shrine. Lovely. And yes, indeed, the cows are plowing. Man, it's just such a gorgeous game. Just look at it. Okay, since we've overproduced boards, I'm a little bit worried we're overproducing other stuff. How are we for spears? Yeah, 158 is probably enough. 107 bows is probably enough. And 122 helmets. Probably enough. Let's go ahead and just pause production on all of these spots. You're making, or you're trying to make gambesons, which we currently can't do because we don't have linen. But we will get our first flax harvest in at some point. These people are all mad because they don't have enough food. But that should improve soon enough. Uh, we should also just put down a bunch of chickens. I have been not doing that. I should be doing that. Okay, you make bows, right, Mr. Fletcher? I think we're going to pause you too. I paused the shields. Should I have done that? We only have five shields. Maybe we want the joiner's shop to keep working. Enemy unit has been spotted. What? Uh-oh. Uh, a band of brigands has arrived. Okay, well, this is exactly what we were talking about. Let's get some archers. I'm going to disband that small group of uh, militiamen. And we can get more archers, maybe? Yeah, 26, 26. We got two bands of soldiers plus the retinue. We should be okay. We got a thousand bucks. Maybe we spend a bit of money on the retainers here. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. So, Mark, you've been upgraded. Alex... You going up? Dr. Wand, already pimped out. Mel Roman, his swag is too powerful. Shadow Assassin, they're gonna kill him. His swag is also too powerful. The drip has a... No one has ever drowned any less than Juan Solo. Stick Monkey, just... I mean, with the stick too, which is pretty impressive. Aurelio, ready to Aurelio some fools into the dirt, if you know what I mean, because I don't. He's of an illegitimate birth is just... Wow. They really called him the B-word. Omega, not to be confused with the Alpha. Crayon Eater, more like Crayon Enjoyer. Oh, yes, there we go. That's a dude who doesn't need face protection. Crovexius, more like about to vex the uh, tax man for his labors or something. Bo Plays TV, time to stream in some real clothes. Man, took... That is, that is a nice model. Look how well articulated, like, not articulated, rather. Sorry, look how well, like, defined the edges are on that plate armor. This is genuinely stunning. Like, like, like that seam right there on the greave is really hard to achieve. Very well done. Also, this is something that you, like, never really deal with in video games, but the templates you need to make these are really, like, unintuitive. They are super wobbly and whitey because your muscles are kind of strange shapes, right? Benjamin, my goodness. Honking the donker over there. Yeah, let's protect that. We want to make sure that stays safe. Also, loving the mouse helm. Old man tater? Not for long. About to be older man tater, because he's not going to die. Also, is that... A, he's got a dagger? Through the money purse. <laughs> Try it. <laughs> Rub me once, it's my fault. Rub me twice, you're dead. I don't know the quotes anymore. My brain is falling apart at the seams here. We got 900 bucks. I think we keep going. Spy on. Spy on this. Low set sun. Well, it's about to rise. 72. <laughs> 73. Ashtongar. Flame Tungar. Brandon Cataray. Brandon Cadaver is what he's going to call the people he kills. Absolutely industries. Absolutely dripped up. Oh my god, he's even got the jousting shield. That's pretty nifty. Pretty cool. Ethan Heinrich. Ethan Heimlich Maneuver because they're going to be choking on their snacks when they see how quickly he puts people down. It's very hard to make this many puns, I'm not going to lie. Tell Roth? Tell Noth. 
no one for thee hast seen my peen. Nasegi what human? Not for long. R noob 90? <laughs> R pro 90 XTI, bitch. No, oh, that was. That was not easy. What did I do all that for? Oh, right! Violence! Incredible violence. Yes, yes, the enemy does descend. Um, I'm going to wait a little bit. Just a little bit, and then rally the troops here. I just want to let them do a little bit more sowing, because uh, we want to make sure we are ready to harvest in autumn. I think we've got the plowing down over there. Okay, let's rally. I'll be feeling a lot of people are going to be leaving the fields to make this happen. Okay, don't run. Don't run. Don't run. We should probably specialize the regions for militia, because you can only have six units. So maybe we should send all of our bows to this area, and then these families here can be our militia. That might be the play. That might be the play. Sorry, they can be our bow militia. So we'll, we'll, these guys can be the archers. These guys can be the the footmen. We could make the bows here and just trade them down there. That would definitely work. Oh, yes, which reminds me. I know we did move that trade hut, but it's still being worked on. Yes. Uh, so in the meantime, then, I can set up all of my trading while we wait for these troops to walk over. So this isn't particularly interesting. So I'll just show you how we do it once, and then you can, you can keep the... Keep the idea in mind. So, for example, I want the war bows over here. I also want helmets over here. I also want gambesons over here at some point. So what I'm going to do is just say import, 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 and then set this number to 40. So we can we can equip 40 men at any moment uh, as soon as we want. That's keeping a surplus of 40. So that's 40 new men. They will take these items to their houses and then it will be taken off this count. So it does not count as part of your surplus, which is awesome. Okay, so then we also want to move trade and stuff back and forth. So we're going to be exporting flax and barley. I want to keep none. None flax, none barley. We want that to all go to the other place. We can also probably export flour. And honestly, I think I don't think I'm ever going to take these houses up to tier 2. So we can just export all flour from here. Let's just, let's just send every piece of flour to the other region. Uh, we are not going to export... Let's do export. There we go. We are not going to export grain. Instead, we will mill the grain here and export it like that. We can just put down some more windmills. And that looks good to me. Um, we're going to want to import linen. We can make our own leather here. So let's say we want to want to bring... I think I'm just going to do sets of 40. So we're going to want to import linen. And we're going to want to export clay as well at some point. So I want to keep no clay in this region. Maybe a bit of clay. So we can make our own tiles that way. There we go. Well, no, we can just make the tiles over there, and then... Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, this, this makes more sense. Okay, export the clay. Uh, and then firewood, wood... I think all of that can chill here for now. I think that's okay. And probably bring in some... Probably bring in some planks. I think we have enough planks over there. And then as for this stuff, again, I think I'm just going to keep these houses at tier 1, tier 2. This village will grow slower. Like, it's not going to um, have as much regional wealth, but maybe that's okay. Maybe I don't care. Maybe wait till we get 30 regional wealth, and we buy another horse. We might also end up expanding the housing out this way. In fact, we are going to be. So let's just put down a preemptive well there. Like, we know we're moving that side, right? There's a well there already. Uh, I would love it if these guys had their own well. You know what? It probably doesn't hurt to have a well down here while we're at it. Okay, cool. And with that, the bandits are upon us, and our men are just about in place. We're going to do our best to make sure the archers here don't get into melee combat. They have a massive debuff to their damage and defense when they're in melee combat, and man, oh man, do they struggle. Okay, Spearman, you go deal with that crew. Y'all just switch to fire at will and blast him. Get behind this enemy's flank, and we're just going to shoot him down. You get in here. Fight this. Get a volley of- Oh no, run, 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 run! Oh no, 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 no! Oh, oh, well, that's... Uh, listen, they- they might actually die. Are we still- we're not within our home territory. Yeah, they're gonna... They're gonna suffer some losses now. Okay, the best thing we can do is get them to push back and just retreat. Retreat, retreat, retreat. 
Okay, only only four men, but still not great. Not the best showing of what archers can do, unfortunately. Give ground, give ground, pull back, pull back. Okay, you lot shoot now. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Get a volley in on him. There we go. Take aim. And fire. Well done. Uh, AI is pretty good. It does a decent job of sort of like attempting to like entrap and encircle your units. And uh, that can make it that can make it a bit of a challenge to fight, even though, you know, I mean, they are just bandits. All right, very cool. Well, let's go ahead and uh, send the men home. We managed to repel that attack, but the bandit size is getting a little bit of a problem. Uh, maybe while we're here, we should actually just go off and deal with some of these camps. There is a group over there. Yeah, you know what? I think we're going to do this. Let's take the archers. I'd like to test them out properly. Let's go ahead and take the archers over there. And then I think we'll send these guys home to go back to the fields. And the retainers can come over here and deal with these bandit camps. You can just walk though. That's fine. Okay, so the import and export on this side has been all set up as far as I can tell. Like, I think it's going to be fine. We now just need to do the uh, construction phase of this trading post. And we will actually be able to do stuff. But... I don't know where all my lumber is. Ah, there it is. It's being brought to these houses first. I see. Yes, there is an order to the operations, as it were. All right, archers, let's move you forward. Okay, this lot can get disbanded. And you should now move a little bit closer to that camp. I don't know if that group actually joined the assault or not. They're not spawning in a group of raiders to fight me. I guess we'll see. Okay, get the retainers over there and let them rest for a moment. Does appear like we get this one for free. Very nice. And I think we will send the resources to the nearest town. Our treasury is looking pretty good. Imagine having to sprint uphill in plate armor. That's not a good time, for sure. Okay, they have spawned in the enemy unit. Let's just stand here and uh, reduce that fatigue a little bit. Try to get up to at least 100% uh, ability. And you don't push forward. I want you to actually stand your ground. And I'm just going to let the retainers do their thing. There we go. We'll, we'll watch the second fight with a little more focus. And I love seeing that all the Burgage plots just going up. Again, send the resources to the nearest town. Aha, and there comes the next batch. Okay, I think we'll fight them right here. Come on, channel members. You got this. See if you can spot your knight. So I know it's a little bit of a color medley, but pay attention. You might just figure out who you are. Oh, I see Crayon Eater. I see Aurelio. I see Omega. I see Tater. Oh, look at that march stepping in. Very nice. Easy clear. And no one's dead. Perfect. Okay, we can disband the archers, send them back to work. And then, get with the retinue. Stunning, and all of our places have been built. Awesome. Let's go ahead and add a... I think we're going to add a chicken coop to most of these. Mostly for the food variety bonus. I think, yeah, yeah, I think that's the play. You're going to go up to level 2. Can you take a workshop? You can. Get some chickens. We should probably also get a couple goats here and there. Eh, chickens for now. Did not mean to do veggies. Did not mean to do veggies. Chicken. All right, and now there's not much else to do except wait. We've kind of just got to hope that the uh, that the people start moving in at the speed we want them to. We could do a couple things to improve the, the population growth rate, but I think at the same time, kind of just keeping it at a pace we can control isn't the worst idea in the world, right? We're mostly waiting for this harvest to come in, and uh, then we can start trading it over to the other settlement. Right now we've got some barley being produced, we've got some uh, delicious, it's a lot of barley. Okay, lots of beers in the, on the horizon for this community. A little bit of wheat over here too, as a treat. I think this lot can probably do with another farmhouse. We can't actually staff it just yet, but that's a problem for later. Can I put down, before we do anything else, can I put down a manor here? Apparently I need to be a small village. We're currently a large village. Okay, so I'd say that's probably not a problem. Looks like we are allowed to put one down. Alright, let's put one down. Have a little manor. 
The Lord of the Manor. The Manor Lord. I'm just interested to know if this is going to add to our retainer account, because that would be freaking cool, man, if it did. Go ahead and add just a little bit of a defensive wall around this spot. Maybe we do something like this. I don't know why the walls bend that much. I, I know you can control the curvature. Yeah, there we go. Gotta love a game that gives you that kind of fidelity of control, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm thinking that looks good. Yeah, it looks good to me. Okay, a little, a little, just a little fort in the middle of the town. Something we can retreat into if uh, we lose the whole thing to bandits. 75 planks shouldn't be that hard to do. We can go ahead and uh, we can go ahead and turn the old, the old plank factory back online and see what we can get out of that. So let's spend a couple of those planks on these stables before I forget. Anyway, as I was saying, now all we really have to do is kind of just look at stuff and wait for things to happen. So. Let's look at some stuff and wait for some things to happen. No one is coming to smith this goddamn piece of iron. A uh, royal tax increased by an undisclosed amount. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. Oh, I was I couldn't see my cursor for a moment. Is anyone on the way to do this? No, nope, they're all transporting stuff. Okay, cool. No one's coming to smith. Maybe Ot here. Perhaps Ot will, will smith the, 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 the smithing stone for us. Come on, Otty boy. Otty, get in. Yeah. Let's go, Otto. And I guess the stuff for like the iron ingot's shape isn't really in the game yet because we is that is that the iron slab there do you think it doesn't look like he was carrying anything but i mean i'm not exactly a bloomsmith okay so he's carrying the red hot lump boom put it down on the log okay now we smith it boom 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 done four strikes and you're out okay then we hawk the still red hot iron over to the shed and we put it down. Hey, okay, we got just a lump of iron. Interesting. Fantastic, there we go. We've got our next farmhouse, and I think we're going to go ahead and add the plowing station. This is definitely a good idea. We're going to need one in each farmhouse. And we can go ahead and put that down there. This group is keeping up with these fields, but I'd like to expand the number of fields we have. I think we're going to spread out this way as well now. Okay, excellent. The population here has grown rapidly. I'd like to get up to 200 before we start worrying about getting the houses to the next level. That's going to be the real focus, probably, of the next episode, is pushing everybody up to tier 4. Uh, tier 3, sorry, not 4. There are only 3 tiers in this game. Nice, the trading post is up, and you know what, let's actually go ahead and put down a couple more uh, livestock hitching posts in the region. I think we can have a pair of them right there. It would be nice to have one right there too, but oh well, c'est la vie. You know what I'm talking about. So let's get a couple traders on the trade, let's order in a new horse, and let's go ahead and set up those trade routes. Now, did it preserve the routes from last time? It did, it did, awesome. Okay, so we're not going to worry about grain, we're not bringing that in. We are going to be sending out iron, bringing in flour. Uh, ironically enough, we will be exporting linen, even though we don't make it here just yet. I'd like to keep a surplus of 40 here, and then we can send the export. We can export the rest out. Uh, we would like to also export... So we would like to import clay, and we want to bring in quite a bit of clay. So we'll bring in like 200 clay. There we go, that looks lovely. Uh, we could probably import firewood if we really got desperate. Next, I would like to import veggies. I think we're going to overproduce on the other side because the population's so much smaller. We would import veggies. I'd like to have like 400 veggies in stock. You know what? Just these are the baseline. So give me 900 veggies in stock. Then for crops, we would definitely like to import flax and barley. Uh, we're going to set these each up to, I mean, bring in as much as you can, right? So 500, 500. We're not going to bring in wheat because instead we're going to process the flour over there. So it's one step closer to becoming bread. And then we're going to need to send out Gambeson. 
I'd like to keep a stockpile of 80 here, just in reserve. Uh, you know what, 40 is probably fine. I'd like to export bows. Yeah, we don't need the bows. So we can send out 40 bows and we'll send out helmets. We'll keep a stockpile of 40 and we want them imported on the other side as well. Although maybe we do want 80. This is a much larger community. Let's let's save up a bit here. But we can we can get some helmets sent over that way. Ooh, and this is a funky shaped one. I wonder what we could put in there. You know what? I think it actually might just be some veggies. It's not it's not it's not huge, but it's also not small. It'll it'll add a couple dozen every year. Definitely worth keeping. And you know what? Put another family in there. The logging camp is definitely out of juice though. We need to move this over here. Okay, next up, we're going to want to start preparing for our industry to expand. We're going to want a malt house. That's going to let us uh, multiply the malt, Balatro style. So I want a malt house over here. And then we're going to want a weavery as well. Probably put that right in, right in here. Do we have a dyer's workshop here? I don't think we're making dyes right now. I'd also like to move this tannery. It, I imagine it's rather stinky. Let's let's put that over here, and we'll put a dyer's workshop down there too. And I think that's going to look fantastic. Make some dyes, make some leather, make some dyed leather. And that means we can reclaim this space over here. Awesome. Tanneries up. Weaver's Workshop's going up next. The malt house is almost functional. We do not yet have goods imported or exported, though, unfortunately. Ah, but we are sending out war bows. Let's go ahead and get another horse. Very cool. As you can see, we've got our horsey chilling over here. He's going to be used by the trader to, uh, to go ahead and, and export those goods for us. Let's expand the stables. And let's make sure we've got the same thing happening on this side of the world. So we definitely want to get two more people trading so we can move those, those those goods back and forth, get the flour out of here, get it moved over to its final resting place. And yeah, 19 bucks regional wealth. Let's go ahead and spend some of that regional wealth to implement these farms. Otherwise, these families aren't doing much for us. Okay, we have had our first piece of flour imported. Look at that. Oh, and there comes the first barley, which means we can now assign someone. You know what? I'll just put someone on the malt house, the weaver's workshop and the tannery just so I don't forget. And you know what? Check him on the dyer's workshop too. It will turn our limited berry supply into dye, but that's okay. And then we are low on fuel, and I think that's because, yes, no one's been working here for a while. Okay, let's uh, let's go ahead and fix that. Someone did mention we are able to clean up the shrubbery, by the way. Uh, you can go ahead and use this tool just to remove it, but I kind of like the way it looks. Sort of makes it, I don't know, a little private garden. I love this food overlay, by the way. We can see who's not being supplied with enough stuff. Everyone's got enough clothing. They're all happy with that. They've got enough fuel. They don't have the food variety, but that's okay. That's that's We're going to be rectifying that soon. The communal oven should start firing up soon, and uh, we'll have plenty of people. Yeah, we got, we got flour, which means we should then have bread. Yes. Okay, great. And yes, indeed, the number of people moving in is steadily increasing. Okay, keep ordering horses until we've got a million of them. I want to make sure my traders are always moving at top speed. Speaking of whom, let's have a look here. Transporting, harvesting, dropping resources. I'd love to see if we're actually going to get much trading done here. Bandit camp was sighted, huh? Ah, oh, come on. That's pretty far away too. It's a pain. What if... Hold on, what if... This is a good job for mercenaries. That is... Which uh, which one? Hofstetten? Hofstetten or Goldhof? That's where we want to claim them. Okay. So, mercs, come on in. These are all pretty far away from from where I want to be. We will just wait for new ones. Ah, there we go. Erhart is trading, and he is unfortunately doing it on foot. Andres as well. Do we not have... Aha! I see. We have to assign the livestock. That is my mistake. Okay, we're waiting for our other horsey to arrive. Right now, there's just the one. Andres is named also Andres. Lo you love to see it. You love to see it. Herman here is also trading, and yes, does appear to be taking a far more sane route from uh, this location to that one. Yeah, that's going to speed things up a fair bit. Let's follow Herman, though. I don't fully trust the game to, to function the way I want it to. Well, so Herman belongs to this trading post. Go to people. We follow Herman. Herman. We follow Hans. His name is... Oh, yeah. Hans. Let's go sell the goods. 
from Tijuana for some reason. Okay, fantastic. They are, this is a significantly more sensible route. Like I said, in, in my testing, they were going from here around the edge of the goddamn map and then coming back in here. It was, it was actually incredible how long they took. I think they actually went all the way along this road, looped back through, came through here and then did the shortcut back. They weren't going back and forth. So, uh, yeah, nice to see that that works. So, if you're playing on the new one, maybe go ahead and do yourself a favor and just upgrade. Also, let's go ahead and commit these resources to upgrading our castle. And then we can go ahead and turn off the small saw pit. And let's watch this go up in real-ish time. We've come a long way, haven't we? Nice! Look at that, we've got ourselves a little bit of a keep. Oh, I like that. Oh, I like that very much. Oh, hello. Welcome, keep. Welcome. And the little shit stole my damn bread. Or rather, the pre-bread. The proto-bread, if you will. I really like the way this looks. Don't you? Oh man, that's a that's a nifty little castle right there. Okay, well, everybody, unfortunately, that is all the time we have for today. This took a little bit longer than expected to put together, but uh, Mana Lords is not going anywhere. I have heard your cries, I have heard your wishes. Thank you so much for your support, for pulling out the pitchforks and forcing the algorithm to make people see this content. You are the real heroes of this series. Magic and I actually would not be doing this if not for that kind of behavior. So please, let us know that you want to see more Mana Lords. Pull the pitchforks out again, set the town hall ablaze, and make sure YouTube understands that this is something people actually do want to see. Until next time, everybody, this has been Largely, and that's been Magic. And we will see you in the next one. Cheers. You made it to the end of the video. Congratulations and thank you. That puts you in the top 3% eh, of viewers. Here's another video that YouTube thinks you're going to like. And here is a list of all the patron and channel member names. If you don't see yours on there, you can find a link down in the description where you can sign up and support this content directly. Uh, if your name is on there, well, you probably already know that, huh? So, um, what are you still doing here?